Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and to another video up here in the woods. Today I'm going to be looking at a very small, a very compact and very lightweight axe from the Swedish manufacturer Gransfors Brook. Now I bought this axe predominantly for green wood carving, for making spoons and that sort of stuff. And it really does excel in that area due to its size and its weight and the fact that it's razor sharp. But I'm not going to kind of focus on that, uh, that aspect of the axe. What I want to know is can I take this with me on a bushcraft camping trip and can I use it around the camp for processing firewood and that sort of stuff. And that's what I'm going to try and find out today. So I'll just give you a, a closer look at the axe. So it comes with this uh, leather sheath, which you can use just to clip on your belt with the, uh, the stud there. Um, now, in terms of dimensions, the entire length of the axe is 24 centimetres. Uh, the length of the head is approximately 12 and a half centimetres. The length of the blade is about seven and a half centimetres. And it's almost three centimetres thick. And it weighs, um, 700 grams so it is fairly lightweight and you know, it does fit in your pocket um, obviously it's it's made by Grants Force Brook uh, one of the world's finest axe makers and the head is uh, you know comes out of the box razor sharp um, I haven't sharpened it yet and I've owned it for about seven or eight months and I've used it quite extensively I just tend to uh, use a leather strop and it's you know you can shave with this it's so sharp um, what I'm thinking about doing over the next few months, once these lockdowns have been lifted, I want to get out a lot more with my backpack um, and do some multi-day trips in the mountains and in the forests. So I'm trying to kind of shed the weight in my pack. Now, if I was traveling in the middle of winter and I wanted a big fire on the evenings to keep warm, you know, if it was gonna get sub-zero temperatures, would I take this ax? No, I wouldn't, I would take my pack axe. But, um, you know, to put it in context, I'm just thinking the shoulder seasons, spring and into autumn. Um, I mean, you can use a knife and you can batten the hell out of uh, some wood with a knife, but on YouTube, I've seen so many people just destroy really good quality bushcraft knives by, you know, trying to batten the living daylights out of them through big chunks of wood and, uh, you know, I don't do that. I kind of say the knife is a, a survival tool, something that should be preserved for when you need it, not something that should be used and abused and pretty much broken. Um, whereas an axe head, you know, this is uh, hardened Swedish steel. I can, I can smack this with a piece of wood all day long and it won't flinch. So, um, so let's have a look at it, see how it functions. So I've just cut a few uh, examples of wood here. I mean, this is the type of stuff I'd be looking for if I was uh, backpacking on a camping trip. I've got a bit here which I'm going to make a, a peg out of. Um, you often, uh, if you don't carry pegs with you and you've got a tarp, you can just use the wood to make one. And I've got a couple of uh, thicker bits of hazel here, which we'll be looking to process. I've got some, I'm um, not really sure what that is. I think it might be pine actually. Um, we'll have a look at feather sticks and I've got a, a bigger example here We'll be looking to kind of get in the middle of there and then here's a fairly large um, Bit of dry hazel so I'll be interested to see if the axe gets through that and then uh, You know, I probably wouldn't find anything like this if I was backpacking and the saw would probably struggle to get through that to be honest but um this is a decent bit of dry pine with a few knots in it. So I'll be interested to see, um, see if the axe will get through that. Now, first of all, I want to just mention a bit of uh, axe safety. Now this axe is actually quite dangerous. I'll show you why. Usually, if you've got a, a pack axe or even a larger splitting tool, um, you can get well away from the blade and you can, um, you know, you always try and bring the handle down parallel to the ground. So if you, even if you do miss, you know, that's going to go straight in the ground. But here, if you can see, there is a danger with this small axe of kind of, you know, missing the target or ricocheting off, following through. 
and you can just see the way it swings you know that could potentially swing right into your to your thigh and because it's a forest axe you've got that section on the bottom which you know that'll stick right in your leg so you can just say that so you really need to be careful so it's always good to, uh, to nail down um, and I'm just going to really take my time with this now the first thing I'm going to do is just quickly knock up a tent peg so you might want to put a tarp up so pretty sure that this isn't going to take me very long because it's this type of stuff that this axe really does excel at Now that's pretty much all you want for a for a, a tent peg. You don't want to make it too sharp because that end will just snap when you you bang it into the ground. And you want to make a little notch. You can use your saw just to saw in, or you can just go in like that. I mean, that'll do me. That literally took me probably under a minute and uh, you've made yourself a tent peg there. Now, what you would do is you would, <laughs> you would always put the sheath back on if you're gonna use your ax as a hammer because you don't want to drop it, you don't want it flying off and um, causing yourself an injury. There you go, perfect temp peg. So let's look at splitting wood. Now I think probably the safest way to use this axe is to do the technique like that, where you kind of whack it in and try and split it that way for a piece of wood this size. As I mentioned, you don't really want to be kind of putting it like that and then swinging down, because it isn't very heavy. And uh, if you miss, <laughs> you know, you're going to do yourself an injury. Just try and get that in there. So that works fine. Um, use a slightly thicker example. I think the technique here is um, if you try and kind of stick it in like that, I mean it worked that time, but if you just kind of give it a, a you know a gentle tap in, the axe is so sharp that you can get it on there before you start whacking it. There's another piece. I mean, there you go. I mean, that is pretty straightforward. Just a minute there and I've got a, a good stash. If you've done that for half an hour, you could actually probably get yourself quite a bit of firewood. Now, this is a slightly thicker beast. Um, and I'm gonna use the same technique. Now you do have to be a a little careful here that you don't kind of whack your your little finger. I mean this is quite a long piece of wood. See what I mean? That's quite close to there and if you're putting a bit of oomph into it just need to try and keep the axe parallel.
Right folks, so this is a, a good chunk of dry hazel. Um, now I'm thinking the best way to kind of try and split this is to is to batten actually with the with the axe. I mean, I'm just going to give it a swing here as safe as I can. Oh, actually, oh, that wasn't too bad. I'll try that again. Oh. <laughs> it's pretty much. Can you see that? Let's have a go this way. Yeah, potentially. Well, I think I might be a bit safer just to, to kind of, to batten the top. Now let's see if we can just, yep, again <laughs> I'm trying to really make sure I don't follow through with that swing. In fact actually I would recommend just battening all the way. I think swinging it is just a little bit too dangerous. That is much safer. Now when you get to these bits you can Well, again, folks, that was easy enough. Um, well, that was a decent sized bit of wood as well. Now, let's have a go. This one uh, <laughs> might give us a bit more trouble. One thing I did notice with that piece of wood there, that the axe kind of, it can kind of get lost in. And once it's in, it's, uh, a bit different to a knife where you've got one edge coming out so you can batten all the way through and I guess that's probably the downside um, let's have a look what I'm going to do here is just pick a just you know with a knife you would actually start on the edge and go through so that's what we'll do here Now this is a this is a tough bit of wood. I actually struggled with the uh, with the split more with some of this pine as well. I think we may have just found the limitations of this axe. Let's just try another piece. Now this is what I mean here, it's kind of, it's going in but once you get this bit beyond the top of the wood then I'm struggling to see how you can continue to button it. See what I mean, in, in it goes. Oh, 
I'll actually just turn you turn that round there so you can see what's going on. To be honest with you folks, trying to get through that with an axe that big is more trouble than it's worth to be honest. I have managed to get a few bits off but uh, I honestly think the pack axe had struggled to, to get through that thing. Yeah so I'm, uh, <laughs> I'm gonna <laughs> call it a day on that leg. Well, I think that uh, a log this size is a, just a, a step too much for that little axe. But I, uh, I have been splitting wood from this same trunk with the you know, huge uh, splitting maul, and I have struggled on occasion, so it is a fairly uh, dense bit of wood. But uh, nevertheless, I mean, I wouldn't persevere with that with that small axe. But um, the other stuff seems fine, you know, it's kind of going through the stuff really well. I want to just uh, see if I can create a bit of a feather stick now to light a fire with. So one of the uh, the great things about the the Grand Sports axes, they are uh, really really sharp, and you should be able to use it like a knife. I mean, I'm not the best at making fire sticks, as you can tell. But if you're just looking for some some tinder for a fire, I mean, as you can see, you know, the blade is you know, fine enough to to get you some decent tinder. So I was quite happy with the performance of the axe there. Um, I think it coped pretty well. I mean, obviously it wasn't gonna go through that uh, big round of pine, but I think one thing you've got to remember is that, you know, if you're just using a saw like the Laplander, you want an axe that's gonna be able to split what this can cut, if you know what I mean. And this isn't going to be cutting much more than what I've been splitting today. So the kind of, uh, it's a good little pair actually. I mean, in the past I've traveled with the uh, Laplander saw and a big pack axe. And I've used a pack axe just to pretty much do what I've done there. And uh, you know, this is half the weight, half the size, and a lot easier to carry, especially uh, on a multi-day trip. And plus, if you get bored in the afternoon, um, you know, you can carve yourself a spoon with this. So it's, it is a, a little uh, versatile axe. It is never going to replace uh, a pack axe for kind of, you know, real intensive firewood processing on a backpacking trip. But uh, as I mentioned at the start of the video, you know, just f as a tool for, for those shoulder trips and for traveling light, can't fall off, I don't think. Um, I think Grand Force Brook do make a couple of axes with the same head but a slightly different shape and longer handle. I think they're the mini hatchet and the wildlife hatchet, um, I think. So I think if you were just going to buy the axe for its weight to take on a, on a backpacking trip then you might be better off kind of getting one with a longer handle and that'll give you the, a, a bit of extra power in the swing if you wanted to chop wood that way. But um, if you're interested in carving, then I would just recommend this axe anyway, just for that purpose alone. And uh, you've got something you can chuck in your backpack and uh, take for an overnight or a, or a multi-day backpacking trip. So, so there you go, the little Grand Force Brook hand hatchet. So yeah, so um, as ever, thanks for watching the video. And I'll see you again in the next one. Mm -hmm.